Neil Leslie Diamond is an American singer-songwriter, musician and occasional actor. He has sold more than 100 million records worldwide, making him one of the best-selling musicians of all time. He has had 10 number one singles on the Hot 100 and Adult Contemporary Charts, Cracklin' Rosie, Song Sung Blue, Longfellow Serenade, I've Been This Way Before, If You Know What I Mean, Desiree, You Don't Bring Me Flowers, America, Yesterday's Songs, and, Heartlight. 38 songs by Diamond have been featured in the top 10 on the Billboard Adult Contemporary Charts. He also played in movies such as The Jazz Singer, a musical drama film. Diamond was inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 1984 and into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2011, and he received the Sammy Kahn Lifetime Achievement Award in 2000. In 2011, he was an honoree at the Kennedy Center Honors, and he received the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award in 2018. In 2019, his 1969 signature song, Sweet Caroline, was selected by the Library of Congress for preservation in the National Recording Registry for being, culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. Early life and education Diamond was born in Brooklyn, New York, to a Jewish family descended from Russian and Polish immigrants. His parents were Rose and Akiba, Kiev, Diamond, a dry goods merchant. He grew up in several homes in Brooklyn, having also spent four years in Cheyenne, Wyoming, where his father was stationed in the Army. In Brooklyn he attended Erasmus Hall High School and was a member of the Freshman Chorus and Choral Club, along with classmate Barbara Streisand. 155 Diamond recalled they were not close friends at the time. We were two poor kids in Brooklyn. We hung out in the front of Erasmus High and smoked cigarettes. After his family moved to Brighton Beach, he attended Abraham Lincoln High School and was a member of the fencing team. Also on the team was his best friend, future Olympic fencer Herb Cohen. For his 16th birthday, he received his first guitar. When he was 16 and still in high school, Diamond spent a number of weeks at Surprise Lake Camp, 21 a camp for Jewish children in upstate New York, when folk singer Pete Seeger performed a small concert. Seeing the widely recognized singer perform, and watching other children singing songs for Seeger that they wrote themselves, had an immediate effect on Diamond, who then became aware of the possibility of writing his own songs. And the next thing, I got a guitar when we got back to Brooklyn, started to take lessons and almost immediately began to write songs, he said. He added that his attraction to songwriting was the first real interest he had growing up, while also helping him release his youthful frustrations. Diamond also used his newly developing skill to write poetry. By writing poems for girls he was attracted to in school, he soon learned it often won their hearts. His male classmates took note and began asking him to write poems for them, which they would sing and use with equal success. 10 He spent the summer following his graduation as a waiter in the Catskills Resort area. There he first met Jay Posner, who would years later become his wife. 26 Diamond next attended New York University as a pre-med major on a fencing scholarship, again on the fencing team with Herb Cohen. He was a member of the 1960 NCAA Men's Championship fencing team. Often bored in class, he found writing song lyrics more to his liking. He began cutting classes and taking the train up to Tin Pan Alley, where he tried to get some of his songs heard by local music publishers. In his senior year, when he was just 10 units short of graduation, Sunbeam Music Publishing offered him a 16-week job writing songs for $50 a week, and he dropped out of college to accept it. Career 1960s Diamond was not rehired after his 16 weeks with Sunbeam, and he began writing and singing his own songs for demos. I never really chose songwriting, he says. It just absorbed me and became more and more important in my life. His first recording contract was billed as Neil and Jack, an Everly Brothers-type duet with high school friend Jack Packer. They recorded the unsuccessful singles, You Are My Love at Last, with What Will I Do, and I'm Afraid, with Till You've Tried Love, both records released in 1962. Cashbox and Billboard magazines gave all four sides excellent reviews, and Diamond signed with Columbia Records as a solo performer later in 1962. In July 1963, Columbia released the single At Night, with Clown Town, Billboard gave an excellent review to Clown Town, and Cashbox gave both sides excellent reviews, but it still failed to make the charts. Columbia dropped him from their label and he went back to writing songs in and out of publishing houses for the next seven years. He wrote wherever he could, including on buses, and used an upright piano above the Birdland Club in New York City. One of the causes of this early nomadic life as a songwriter was his song's wordiness. I'd spent a lot of time on lyrics, and they were looking for hooks, and I didn't really understand the nature of that, he says. He was able to sell only about one song a week during those years, barely enough to survive on. He found himself only earning enough to spend 35 cents a day on food but the privacy that he had above the Birdland Club allowed him to focus on writing without distractions. Something new began to happen. I wasn't under the gun, and suddenly interesting songs began to happen, songs that had things none of the others did. Among them were, Cherry, Cherry, and, Solitary Man. Solitary Man, was the first record that Diamond recorded under his own name which made the charts. It remains one of his personal all-time favorites, as it was about his early years as a songwriter, even though he failed to realize it at the time. 
He describes the song as an outgrowth of my despair. 37 Diamond spent his early career in the Brill Building. His first success as a songwriter came in November 1965 with Sunday and Me, a top 20 hit for Jay and the Americans. Greater success followed with I'm a Believer, A Little Bit Me, A Little Bit You, Look Out, and Love to Love, all performed by the Monkees. He wrote and recorded the songs for himself, but the cover versions were released before his own. The unintended consequence was that Diamond began to gain fame as a songwriter. I'm a Believer became a gold record within two days of its release and stayed at the top of the charts for seven weeks, making it the popular music song of the year in 1966. 44, and The Grass Won't Pay No Mind, brought covers from Elvis Presley and Mark Lindsay, former lead singer for Paul Revere and the Raiders. Other notable artists who recorded his early songs were the English hard rock band Deep Purple, Lulu and Cliff Richard. In 1966, Diamond signed a deal with Burt Burns's Bang Records, then a subsidiary of Atlantic. His first release on that label was, Solitary Man, which was his first true hit as a solo artist. Diamond followed with, Cherry, Cherry, and, Kentucky Woman, 37 His early concerts featured him opening for bands such as Herman's Hermits and The Who. 45 As a guest performer with The Who, he was shocked to see Pete Townsend swinging his guitar like a club and then throwing it against walls and off the stage until the instrument's neck broke. 46 Diamond began to feel restricted by Bang Records because he wanted to record more ambitious, introspective music, such as, Brooklyn Roads, from 1968. Burns wanted to release, Kentucky Woman, as a single, but Diamond was no longer satisfied writing simple pop songs, so he proposed, Shiloh, which was not about the Civil War but rather an imaginary childhood friend. Bang believed that the song was not commercial enough, so it was relegated to being an LP track on, Just For You. Diamond was also dissatisfied with his royalties and tried to sign with another record label after discovering a loophole in his contract that did not bind him exclusively to either Web IV or Talleyrand but the result was a series of lawsuits that coincided with a slump in his record sales and professional success. A magistrate refused Web IV's request for a temporary injunction to prevent Diamond from joining another record company while his contract dispute continued in court, but the lawsuits persisted until February 18, 1977, when he triumphed in court and purchased the rights to his Bang Era Master Tapes. 51 On March 18, 1968, Diamond signed a deal with Uni Records, the label was named after Universal Pictures, the owner of which, MCA Inc., later consolidated its labels into MCA Records. His debut album for Uni, MCA was Velvet Gloves and Spit, produced by Tom Catalano, which did not chart, and he recorded the follow-up Brother Love's Traveling Salvation Show at American Sound Studios in Memphis with Tommy Cogbill and Chips Moment producing. 1970s In late 1969, he moved to Los Angeles. His sound mellowed with such songs as, Sweet Caroline, Holly Holy, Cracklin' Rosie, and, Song Sung Blue, the last two reaching number one on the Hot 100. Sweet Caroline was Diamond's first major hit after his slump. In 2007 Diamond said he had written, Sweet Caroline, for Caroline Kennedy after seeing her on the cover of Life in an equestrian riding outfit, but in 2014 he said in an interview on the Today Show that it was written for his then-wife, Marsha. He could not find a good rhyme with the name, Marsha, and so used the name Caroline. It took him just one hour, in a Memphis hotel, to write and compose it. The 1971 release, I Am. I Said, was a top five hit in both the US and UK and was his most intensely personal effort to date, taking over four months to complete. In 1971, Diamond played seven sold-out concerts at the Greek Theatre in Los Angeles. The outdoor theatre, which was noted for showcasing the best of current entertainers, added a stereo sound system for the first time. Diamond was also backed by a 35-piece string orchestra and six backing singers. 86 after the first night, one leading newspaper called it, the finest concert in Greek theatre history. 87 in August 1972, he played again at the Greek, this time doing ten shows. When the show was first announced, tickets at the 5,000-seat theater sold out rapidly. 93 he added a quadraphonic sound system for his performance to create full surround sound. The performance of August 24, 1972, was recorded and released as the live double album Hot August Night. Hot August Night demonstrates Diamond's skills as a performer and showman, as he reinvigorated his back catalog of hits with new energy. Diamond recalled, Hot August Night captures a very special show for me. We went all out to really knock him dead in LA, 93 many consider it his best work. Critic Stephen Thomas Earlywine called Hot August Night, the ultimate Neil Diamond record. Shows Diamond the icon in full glory. The album became a classic, and was remastered in 2000 with additional selections. In Australia, which at the time had the most Neil Diamond fans per capita of any country, 94 the album ranked number one for 29 weeks and stayed in their top 20 bestsellers for two years, 94 in the fall of 1972, Diamond performed for 20 consecutive nights at the Winter Garden Theatre in New York City, 95 that theatre had not staged a one-man show since Al Jolson in the 1930s, 95 the approximately 1,600-seat Broadway venue provided an intimate concert setting not common at the time, with every performance reportedly sold out, 95 it also made Diamond 
Diamond the first rock era star to headline on Broadway. 95 The review in the New York Times stated, Neil Diamond's one-man show seemed, on the face of it, to be a brash idea. One-man shows have traditionally been associated with talents like Judy Garland and Danny Kaye. But Mr. Diamond is clearly a brash young man and one with both the musical track record and the performance macho to bring it off. He needn't worry about comparisons with the likes of Garland and Kay. 95 After the Winter Garden shows, Diamond announced that he needed a break, and he engaged in no more live performances till 1976. He used those four years to work on the score for Hall Barlett's film version of Richard Bach's Jonathan Livingston Seagull and to record two albums, Serenade and Beautiful Noise. He said years later, I knew I'd come back, but I wasn't sure when. I spent one year on each of those albums. I'd been on the road six years. I had a son two and a half and I felt he needed me more than the audience did. So for four years I devoted myself to my son Jesse. He also said he needed to get back to having a private life, one where he could be anonymous. In 1973, Diamond switched labels again, returning to Columbia Records for a million dollar advance per album contract. His first project, released as a solo album, was the soundtrack to Jonathan Livingston Seagull. The film received hostile reviews and did poorly at the box office, and the album grossed more than the film did. Richard D. Bach, author of the best-selling source story, disowned the film, and he and Diamond sued Bartlett, though for differing reasons. In Bach's case, it was because he felt the film omitted too much from the original novella, whereas in Diamond's case, it was because he felt the film had butchered his score. After Jonathan, Diamond declared, I vowed never to get involved in a movie again unless I had complete control. Bartlett angrily responded to Diamond's lawsuit by criticizing his music as having become too slick. Dot and it's not as much from his heart as it used to be. Bartlett also added, Neil is extraordinarily talented. Often his arrogance is just a cover for the lonely and insecure person underneath. Despite the controversy surrounding the film, the soundtrack was a success, peaking at number two on the Billboard Albums chart. Diamond also won a Golden Globe Award for Best Original Score and a Grammy Award for Best Score Soundtrack Album for a Motion Picture. Thereafter, Diamond often included a Jonathan Livingston Seagull suite in his live performances, as he did in his 1976, Love at the Greek concert and for his show in Las Vegas that same year. Diamond returned to live shows in 1976 with an Australian tour, the Thank You Australia concert, which was broadcast to 36 television outlets nationwide. He also again appeared at the Greek Theatre in a 1976 concert, Love at the Greek. An album and accompanying video, DVD of the show includes a version of, Song Sung Blue, with duets with Helen Reddy and Henry Winkler, aka Arthur, the Fonz, Fonzarelli of Happy Days. He began wearing colorful beaded shirts in concert, originally so that everyone in the audience could see him without binoculars. Bill Whitten designed and made the shirts for Diamond from the 1970s till approximately 2007. In 1974, Diamond released the album Serenade, from which, Longfellow Serenade, and, I've Been This Way Before, were issued as singles. The latter had been intended for the Jonathan Livingston Seagull score, but Diamond had completed it too late for inclusion. That same year he appeared on a TV special for Shirley Bassey and sang a duet with her. In 1976, he released Beautiful Noise, produced by Robbie Robertson of the band. On Thanksgiving 1976, Diamond made an appearance at the band's farewell concert, The Last Waltz, performing Dry Your Eyes, which he wrote jointly with Robertson, and which had appeared on Beautiful Noise. He also joined the rest of the performers on stage at the end in a rendition of Bob Dylan's, I Shall Be Released. Diamond was paid $650,000 from the Aladdin Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, to open its new $10 million theater for the performing arts on July 2, 1976. The show played through July 5 and drew sold-out crowds at the 7,500-seat theater. A Who's Who of Hollywood attended opening night, ranging from Elizabeth Taylor to Chevy Chase, and Diamond walked out on stage to a standing ovation. He opened the show with a story about an ex-girlfriend who dumped him before he became successful. His lead in line to the first song of the evening was, You may have dumped me a bit too soon, baby, because look who's standing here tonight. He performed at Woburn Abbey on July 2, 1977, to an audience of 55,000 British fans. The concert and interviews were taped by film director William Friedkin, who used six cameras to capture the performance. In 1977, Diamond released I'm Glad You're Here With Me Tonight, including You Don't Bring Me Flowers, for which he composed the music and on the writing of whose lyrics he collaborated with Alan Bergman and Marilyn Bergman. Barbara Streisand covered the song on her album Songbird, and later, a Diamond Streisand duet was recorded, spurred by the success of radio mashups. That version hit number one in 1978, his third song to top the Hot 100. They appeared unannounced at the 1980 Grammy Award Ceremony, where they performed the song to a surprised and rapturous audience. His last 1970s album was September Morn, which included a new version of, I'm a Believer. It and, Red Red Wine, are his best-known original songs made more famous by other artists. In February 1979, the uptempo, Forever in Blue Jeans, co-written and jointly composed with his guitarist, Richard Bennett, 
was released as a single from You Don't Bring Me Flowers, Diamond's album from the previous year. In 1979, Diamond collapsed on stage in San Francisco and was taken to the hospital, where he endured a 12-hour operation to remove what turned out to be a tumor on his spine. He said he had been losing feeling in his right leg, for a number of years but ignored it. When he collapsed, he had no strength in either leg. He underwent a long rehabilitation process just before starting principal photography on his film The Jazz Singer. He was so convinced he was going to die that he wrote farewell letters to his friends. 1980s A planned film version of You Don't Bring Me Flowers to star Diamond and Streisand fell through when Diamond instead starred in a 1980 remake of the Al Jolson classic The Jazz Singer alongside Laurence Olivier and Lucy Arnaz. Though the movie received poor reviews, the soundtrack spawned three top ten singles, Love on the Rocks, Hello Again, and, America, the last of which had emotional significance for Diamond. America, was the story of my grandparents, he told an interviewer. It's my gift to them, and it's very real for me. In a way, it speaks to the immigrant in all of us. 89 The song was performed in full by Diamond during the film's finale. An abbreviated version played over the film's opening titles. The song was also the one he was most proud of partly because of when it was later used. National news shows played it when the hostages were shown returning home after the Iran hostage crisis ended. It was played on the air during the 100th anniversary of the Statue of Liberty, and at a tribute to slain civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr., as well as the Vietnam Vets' Welcome Home concert, he was asked to perform it live. At the time, a national poll found the song to be the number one most recognized song about America, more than God Bless America. It also became the anthem of his world tour two weeks after the attacks on America on September 11, 2001, when he changed the lyric at the end from, They're Coming to America, to, Stand Up for America. Earlier that year he performed it after a request from former heavyweight champion Muhammad Ali. The film's failure was due in part to Diamond never having acted professionally before. I didn't think I could handle it, he said later, seeing himself as a fish out of water. 85 for his performance, Diamond became the first ever winner of a Worst Actor Razzie Award, even though he was nominated for a Golden Globe Award for the same role. Critic David Wilde noted that the film showed that Diamond was open about his religion. Who else but this Jewish Elvis could go multi platinum with an album that featured a version of The Kol Nidri? Diamond later told the Los Angeles Times, For me, this was the ultimate bar mitzvah. 85 Another top 10 selection, Heartlight, was inspired by the blockbuster 1982 movie E.T. The Extra-Terrestrial. Though the film's title character is never mentioned in the lyrics, Universal Pictures, which had released E.T. The Extra-Terrestrial and was the parent company of the Uni Records label by then called MCA Records, for which Diamond had recorded for years, briefly threatened legal action against both Diamond and Columbia Records. Diamond's record sales slumped somewhat in the 1980s and 1990s, his last single to make the Billboard's pop singles chart coming in 1986, but his concert tours continued to be big draws. Billboard magazine ranked Diamond as the most profitable solo performer of 1986. He released his 17th studio album in 1986, Headed for the Future, which reached number 20 on the Billboard 200. Three weeks later he starred in Hello Again, his first television special in nine years, performing comedy sketches and a duo medley with Carol Burnett. In January 1987, Diamond sang the national anthem at the Super Bowl. His America became the theme song for the Michael Dukakis 1988 presidential campaign. That same year, UB40's reggae interpretation of Diamond's ballad, Red Red Wine, topped the Billboard Pop Singles chart and, like the Monkees' version of, I'm a Believer, became better known than Diamond's original version. 1990s During the 1990s, Diamond produced six studio albums. He covered many classic songs from the movies and from famous Brill Building era songwriters. He also released two Christmas albums, the first of which peaked at number 8 on Billboard's album chart. Diamond also recorded two albums of mostly new material during this period. In 1992, he performed for President George H. W. Bush's final Christmas in Washington NBC special. In 1993, Diamond opened the mark of the Quad Cities with two shows on May 27 and 28 to a crowd of 27,000-plus. The 1990s saw a resurgence in Diamond's popularity. Sweet Caroline became a popular sing along at sporting events. It was used at Boston College football and basketball games. College sporting events in other states also played it, and it was even played at sports events in other countries, such as a Hong Kong Sevens rugby tournament or a soccer match in Northern Ireland. It is played at every home game of the Sydney Swans of the Australian Football League. It became the theme song of Red Sox Nation, the fans of the Boston Red Sox. The New York Rangers also adapted it as their own and played it whenever they were winning at the end of the third period of their games. The Pitt Panthers football team also played it after the third quarter of all home games, with the crowd cheering, Let's Go Pitt. The Carolina Panthers played it at the end of every home game they won. The Davidson College Pep Band likewise played it in the second half of every Davidson Wildcats men's basketball home game. 2000's A More Severely Stripped Down to Basics album, 12 songs, produced by Rick Rubin, 
was released on November 8, 2005, in two editions a standard 12 song release, and a special edition with two bonus tracks, including one featuring backing vocals by Brian Wilson. The album debuted at number 4 on the Billboard chart, and received generally positive reviews. Erlewine describes the album as inarguably Neil Diamond's best set of songs in a long, long time. Twelve songs also became noteworthy as one of the last albums to be pressed and released by Sony BMG with the extended copy protection software embedded in the disc. In 2007, Diamond was inducted into the Long Island Music Hall of Fame. On March 19, 2008, it was announced on the television show American Idol that Diamond would be a guest mentor to the remaining Idol contestants, who would sing Diamond songs for the broadcasts of April 29 and 30, 2008. On the April 30th broadcast, Diamond premiered a new song, Pretty Amazing Grace, from his then recently released album Home Before Dark. On May 2, 2008, Sirius Satellite Radio started Neil Diamond Radio. On April 8, 2008, Diamond made a surprise announcement in a big screen broadcast at Fenway Park that he would be appearing there, live in concert, on August 23, 2008, as part of his world tour. The announcement, which marked the first official confirmation of any 2008 concert dates in the U.S., came during the traditional eighth-inning singalong of, Sweet Caroline, which had by that time become an anthem for Boston fans. On April 28, 2008, Diamond appeared on the roof of the Jimmy Kimmel building to sing, Sweet Caroline, after Kimmel was jokingly arrested for singing the song dressed as a Diamond impersonator. Home Before Dark was released May 6, 2008, and topped the album charts in New Zealand, the United Kingdom and the United States. On June 29, 2008, Diamond played to an estimated 108,000 fans at the Glastonbury Festival in Somerset, England on the concert of a lifetime tour. Technical problems marred the concert. In August, Diamond allowed cameras to record his entire four-night run at New York's Madison Square Garden. He released the resulting DVD in the U.S. in 2009, one year to the day of the first concert. Hot August Night, NYC debuted at number two on the charts. On the same day the DVD was released, CBS aired an edited version, which won the ratings hour with 13 million viewers. The next day, the sales of the DVD surged, prompting Sony to order more copies to meet the high demand. On August 25, 2008, Diamond performed at the Ohio State University while suffering from laryngitis. The result disappointed him as well as his fans, and on August 26, he offered refunds to anyone who applied by September 5. Diamond was honored as the Music Cares Person of the Year on February 6, 2009, two nights before the 51st Annual Grammy Awards. Long loved in Boston, Diamond was invited to sing at the July 4, 2009, Independence Day celebration. On October 13, 2009, he released A Cherry Cherry Christmas, his third album of holiday music. 2010's On November 2, 2010, Diamond released the album Dreams, a collection of 14 interpretations of his favorite songs by artists from the rock era. The album also included a new slow-tempo arrangement of his, I'm a Believer. In December, he performed a track from the album, Ain't No Sunshine, on NBC's The Sing-Off with Committed and Street Corner Symphony, two a cappella groups featured on the show. The Very Best of Neil Diamond, a compilation CD of Diamond's 23 studio recordings from the Bang, Uni, MCA, and Columbia catalogs, was released on December 6, 2011, on the Sony Legacy label. The years 2011 and 2012 were marked by several milestones in Diamond's career. On March 14, 2011, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame at a ceremony at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City. In December, he received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Kennedy Center at the 2011 Kennedy Center Honors. On August 10, 2012, Diamond received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In November 2012, he topped the bill at the centenary edition of the Royal Variety Performance in the UK, which was transmitted on December 3. He also appeared in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. On April 20, 2013, Diamond made an unannounced appearance at Fenway Park to sing, Sweet Caroline, during the eighth inning. It was the first game at Fenway since the Boston Marathon bombing. On July 2, he released the single, Freedom Song, with 100% of the purchase price benefiting One Fund Boston and the Wounded Warrior Project. Sporting a beard, Diamond performed live on the West Lawn of the U.S. Capitol as part of a Capitol Fourth, which was broadcast nationally by PBS on July 4, 2013. In January 2014, it was confirmed that Diamond had signed with the Capital Music Group unit of Universal Music Group, which also owned Diamond's Uni MCA catalog. UMG also took over Diamond's Columbia and Bang catalogs, which meant that all of his recorded output would be consolidated for the first time. On July 8, 2014, Capital Records announced, via a flyer included with Diamond's latest greatest hits compilations, All Time Greatest Hits, which charted at 15 in the Billboard 200. That his next album, Melody Road, which was to be produced by Don Was and Jackknife Lee, would be released on September 30, 2014. In August, the release date was moved to October 21. In September 2014, Diamond performed a surprise concert at his alma mater, Erasmus High School in Brooklyn. The show was announced via Twitter that afternoon.
On the same day, he announced a 2015 Melody Road World Tour. The North American leg of the World Tour 2015 launched with a concert in Allentown, Pennsylvania at the PPL Center on February 27 and ended at the Pepsi Center in Denver, Colorado on May 31, 2015. Diamond used new media platforms and social media extensively throughout the tour, streaming several shows live on Periscope and showing tweets from fans who used the hashtag hash tweet Caroline on two large screens. The San Diego Union Tribune wrote, This, my friends, wasn't your grandfather's Neil Diamond concert. It was a multimedia extravaganza. Twitter. Periscope. It was a social media blitzkrieg that, by all accounts, proved to be an innovative way to widen his fanbase. In October 2016, Diamond released Acoustic Christmas, a folk-inspired Christmas album of original songs as well as acoustic versions of holiday classics. Produced by Was and Lee, who had produced Melody Road, the idea for the album began to take shape as the Melody Road sessions ended. To channel the intimate atmosphere of 60s folk, Diamond recorded Acoustic Christmas with a handful of musicians, sitting around a circle of microphones, wires and, of course, Christmas lights. In March 2017, the career-spanning anthology Neil Diamond 50 50th Anniversary Collection was released. He began his final concert tour, the 50-year anniversary world tour in Fresno, California, in April. In 2019, Sweet Caroline, was selected by the Library of Congress for preservation in the National Recording Registry for being, culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. Diamond was among hundreds of artists whose material was destroyed in the 2008 Universal Fire. 2020's on March 7, 2020, despite his retirement due to Parkinson's disease, Diamond gave a rare performance at the Keep Memory Alive Power of Love Gala at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, where he was being honored. On March 22, 2020, Diamond posted a video to YouTube playing, Sweet Caroline, with slightly modified lyrics in response to the widespread social distancing measures implemented due to the worldwide COVID-19 pandemic. In April 2021, the New York Times reported that A Beautiful Noise, a musical based on Diamond's life and featuring his songs, would open at the Emerson Colonial Theatre in Boston in the summer of 2022. The musical was scheduled to open on Broadway following the month-long run in Boston. Retirement in January 2018, Diamond announced that he would immediately retire from touring due to having been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Tour dates on the final leg of Diamond's 50-year anniversary world tour in Australia and New Zealand were cancelled. An announcement on his official website said he was not retiring from music and that the cancellation of the live performances would allow him to continue his writing, recording and development of new projects. On July 28, 2018, Diamond and his wife Katie McNeil made a surprise visit to the Incident Command Post in Basalt, Colorado, near where Diamond lives, to thank the firefighters and families with a solo acoustic guitar concert for efforts in containing the Lake Christine fire, which began on July 3 and had scorched 12,000 acres of land. In pop culture in 1967, Diamond was featured on the fourth episode of the detective drama Mannix as the featured artist in a small underground club called The Bad Scene and was interrupted during his singing by one of many fights that took place weekly on the show. In 2000, Neil Diamond appeared on stage with Diamond tribute band, Super Diamond, surprising them before their show at House of Blues in Los Angeles. In the 2001 comedy film Saving Silverman, the main characters play in a Diamond cover band, and Diamond made an extended cameo appearance as himself. Diamond even wrote and composed a new song, I Believe in Happy Endings, for the film. He sat in with the tribute band Super Diamond at the film's premiere party. In 2008, Diamond gave filmmaker Greg Coase permission to use his songs in a documentary. Coase, a director from Philadelphia, had met a popular Milwaukee-Wisconsin duo, Lightning and Thunder, composed of Mike Sardina, who did a Diamond impersonation, and his wife Claire. Coase followed them for eight years and produced the film song Sung Blue. Though Sardina had died in 2006, Diamond invited his widow and her family to be his front-row guests at his show in Milwaukee, where he told them he was moved by the film. In the CBS comedy The Big Bang Theory, main characters Howard Wolowitz and Amy Farrah Fowler are fans of Diamond's work. Personal life Diamond has been married three times. In 1963, he married his high school sweetheart, Jay Posner, who had become a schoolteacher. They had two daughters, Marjorie and Ellen. They separated in 1967 and divorced in 1969. On December 5, 1969, Diamond married production assistant Marcia Murphy. They had two sons, Jesse and Micah. The marriage lasted 25 years, ending in 1994 or 1995. In 1996, Diamond began a lengthy, live-in relationship with Australian Ray Farley after the two met in Brisbane, Australia. The songs on Home Before Dark were written and composed during her struggle with chronic back pain. On September 7, 2011, in a message on Twitter, the 70-year-old Diamond announced his engagement to the 41-year-old Katie McNeil. Diamond said that his 2014 album Melody Road was fueled by their relationship, explaining, There's no better inspiration or motivation for work than being in love. It's what you dream of as a creative person. I was able to complete this album, start it, write it and complete it, 
under the spell of love, and I think it shows somehow. The couple married in front of family and close friends in Los Angeles in 2012. In addition to serving as Diamond's manager, McNeil produced the documentary Neil Diamond, Hot August Nights NYC.